Another thing that carnivores often bring up is the apparent truth of bioavailability. Apparently the nutrients from animals are just way easier to consume for our organism than plants are. But is that really true? In this video I'll be presenting you the freaking data about bioavailability. Remember, all I offer is the truth and videos with 50 views. <laughs> it even rhymed. First of all, we have to understand that all nutrients on this planet originate from the sun and from the soil. So if someone is asking you where do you get all the zinc, protein, B12 from, there's a simple answer, where do all the animals get it? And sometimes, yes, they do get it from supplements. Now you might bring forth that animals do have a different phenotype and therefore a different genome. And this is certainly true. But it turns out that the human organism is less carnivorous than you might think. If you compare the length of our digestive tract to our torso size, it puts us on the frugivore scale. Our stomach is less acidic than a carnivorous stomach and we do not have hands or teeth to hunt prey. Yes, we hunt the prey in our hunter-gatherer times, but the great apes, the family that we're belonging to since a long time, were certainly not famous for their sharp hunting spears and the cooking fires. We need to stop comparing ourselves to our hunter-gatherer cousins because we lived like that only for a brief period of time. If we want to conclude anything about our eating behavior, we need to take a look at the nutrient intake of great apes, which we are a part of since like 30 million years. If we take a look at the data of paleolithic diets, even the authors conclude that diets based largely on plant foods promote health and longevity, at least under conditions of food abundance and physical activity. Which is a state we happen to live in. In this study there's also a quote of, although the structure of the primate digestive tract suggests that the predominant foods should be plants, evidence also indicates that these animals eat whatever is readily at hand. Just because humans hunted prey in the survival situation does not mean that it was the right thing to do. There are plenty of stories of people turning to cannibalism in extreme scenarios. Does that conclude that cannibalism is our preferred way of eating? Your opinion is of no value here, Mr. Lecturer, because it's an anecdote. Second, now that we realize that humans are originally destined to eat fruits and vegetables, we need to take a look at how plants and meat differ. Because animals and human beings are similar, we both have skeletal muscle, a functioning cardiovascular system and a nervous system, which by the way makes us both able to feel pain. It's funny because in essence carnivore cult people conclude that humans can survive solely of structures similar to our organism. Well, if that is true, then cannibalism should be the most effective diet there is. The longest lifespan shouldn't be measured in Japan, which heavily depended on fruits and vegetables, but rather in warlords of the first Liberian civil war. <laughs> the global burden of disease study wouldn't conclude that the best way to minimize disease and risk factors is to increase fruit and vegetable intake. No, they would instead advise you to eat your freaking neighbor. If you continue this comparison and put it to the extreme, the best diet for ants should be ants. The best diet for lions should be lions. The best diet for elephants should be f***ing elephants. <laughs> Why not freaking take General Butt Naked as a nutrition counselor? He was known for eating children. His life expectancy must be through the roof. Well, funny enough, he's a pastor now. What you all learn in a QG video, am I right? Well, if you listen to the data, it turns out that the act of cannibalism only occurs in cases of severe stress or mental f***ed upness. Would be a goddamn genius organism if the preferred food choice would only come into fruition in life or death scenarios. There's this paper with over 632 citations, therefore pretty valid, which speaks only about nutrients in plants. The word meat only gets talked about like six times in the entire paper. This is one fifth of the occurrence of the word plant. I know this is not the best metric, but this just shows that the main focus in the medical community when it comes to nutrients is in plants and not in meat. Because the truth is, even if we assume the best quality, 100% bioavailability of zero is still zero. 
You can eat all the steak that you want. You still don't get all the nutrients. Good luck finding folate, vitamin A, C, D, E and K. Also, you won't need to worry about minerals, phytochemicals or polyphenols because before you've wrapped your mind about their importance, you, dear sir, are probably already dead. And if we jump back to the same person, if you're worried about anti-nutrients, nutrients deleting the effects of other nutrients in your diet, you shall not. This paper concludes that it is evident that both adverse and health benefits may be attributed to anti-nutrients in foods. It's also evident that in many cases, the same interactions that make them anti-nutritive also are responsible for their beneficial effects. Remember that especially in nutrition, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So don't be worried about arguments of bioavailability from people with a life expectancy of a Liberian warlord. The chances are so freaking high that this video gets demonetized. <laughs> if you like this video and want to know more about fitness, nutrition, mindset and health, and how these things can help you get the most out of your life, subscribe to this channel.